Got you like here's my man. Okay, so all right, so as we're going through this, there's my pen. All right. So the the objective is to recognize the basic characteristics of of epithelium, some functions, basic characteristics. Uh, we'll go back through this. This is a structure, all right, that you're going to hear us talk about the apical surface. It's also called the lamina propria, and uh, I'll write like LP there. So let's do this. All right. So we've already looked at this, right? So you tell me, so I can record it. If I were to label this for a knife here, what should I point out to them? Yes. That's what that symbol means. You're trying to get me. Well, okay, well, tell me. If generically, what visual would you first point out to them? That's flat. This, this one right here is flat? Yeah. Okay, so this is flat. Okay. All right, and we call it squamous. Some people call it squamous. So this describes what? Shape, but then this is part of the name. What does that tell you? That tells you the layering, so as in a single layer. <coughs> Versus this right here, which is multiple layer. All right, so this is, I'll just write multi for the purpose of the video here. Multi-video, multi-layer. All right, so flat shape, what's this shape over here? All right, this is going to be tubular, and of course, cuboidal, again, simple, all right? And then here's another, this is another example of stratified. So let's, and then we talked about this uh, pseudostratified, that it's actually one layer of cells, but because of them being opposite directions, it gives the feel of it. And Can someone close that door back there? Oh, wait, never mind. I know what they're doing. They're doing a lab. Okay, so, all right, so now, let's look at this guy here. All right, epithelium forms surface body cavities, organs, glands, tubular like, tubular organs like ducts and vessels, like the duct on a exocrine gland or a capillary. And so if you notice, we got this thing called cutaneous. We've got mucosa. And then the next slide gives you something called uh, serous. There are three distinct types of membranes. So let me just, OK, so a cutaneous membrane, think about your skin. All right, now what I'm writing here is what the three types of membranes, but we're also adding in a function of, ep of epithelia. So what do you think, what is this doing to you? All right, so this is a covering, all right, and think about protection, all right? Your cutaneous, your cutaneous membrane is a protection. It's your, your, it's your skin. Okay, so over here, one of the things to know about a uh, mucous membrane is, and that's a name for like the memory. It's called mucosa. All right, let's say your nasal mucosa, all right? The mucosa of the bronchi. Well, there's actually, one of the things is, it's actually an open airway, or I should say a open passageway to the outside. It's an open passageway to the outside. Your lungs, you know, what's going on over here has no bearing on, on this. This is a, that's open to the outside. That's one thing about this membrane. So the membrane in here, there's going to be fluid, that, there's going to be mucus that's going to be there for lubrication and protection, all right? But then there's actually sacs here. When we get to the respiratory system, we'll talk about that. So this is your second of your three types of epithelial membranes. Now, here's another, and they're referred to as the serous membrane, all right? So the stuff up the top, it just kind of repeats each time. So serous membrane is your third type 
the membrane. And it's divided into different categories, like your uh, parietal and your visceral. Parietal and visceral. And parietal would be the outer one, visceral would be the inner one. Um, if you look over here, let's follow this example over here. So the outer wall is referred to as the parietal wall, and then the inner wall is the visceral, and inside that is going to be this fluid, and it's called serous fluid. <coughs> Right. There's some other things I want to add about this, but you see this in your thoracic cavity, you see it in your thoracic cavity, and you also see it in your abdominal cavity. You, now take a quick look at the names. First name's the same, isn't it? Now the location tells you which, which type of, of serous membrane you're looking at. So we're looking at it. the pleura is in a reference to the lungs. The pericardium is this same inner outer membrane that surrounds the heart. Okay, so think about pleura with the lungs, pericardium with the heart, and then get to the abdominal cavity over here, and think of anything that's peritoneum is the abdominal cavity. So, peritoneum So, so far for epithelium, we've basically said, all right, well, here's here's uh, some basic functions. Here's the shapes of the cells. And now here's some extension of membranes, but they're not actually the, uh, like what people would think about as organs. So let's uh, just pause for a second, take a look at what you have here. This just further elaborates everything I wrote on that last picture, so I would... And when you're studying it, go back and look through and what's important here. Um, mucous membrane. Right? Now, what we want you to start doing is seeing over here, when it talks about, oh, it produces uh, mucus, um, what organ system do you associate with it? And then now, the next layer for this, as we're studying this, is to add in, oh, what type of cells uh, do you associate? All right, here's one. There's the, this is that basement membrane. Here's some epithelia. Do you see some stuff on top? Isn't that cilia? So it's ciliated columnar, All right? This is ciliated columnar, okay? Now let's look over here, this, this serous membrane. It lines the ventral cavities, meaning you've got peritoneal, pleural, pericardial, the ones that we just talked about on the previous one, lining. Now what I'm getting at is, we're using, we just said, hey, the epithelium does certain functions, right? It lines, it protects. Now I'm showing you where in the body it happens and showing that function, and now starting to add in the layer of the cells. When you're studying this, you're gonna spend a lot of time doing the anatomy part of, hey, it's a columnar, it's a squamous, but then the physiology is starting to say, what does it do? Right, structure and function. Okay, so a cutaneous membrane, skin, a lot of time, associate with skin and covering, you want as many a buttload of layers. You want as many layers as you, you should can. That's when you're going to see this. This would be stratified squamous. See that the, all those layers where it's labeled epithelium, they're all stratified squamous, and they're more flat towards the top. Some of them get a little more circular towards the bottom, okay? This right here and this, those are CT as in connective tissue. This is, well, epithelial, I tell you. Areola is another CT, all right? Uh, I want to save going into CT, but I want to just throw that out there while we see it. Okay, um, now this is the, this is, these A through C, are all associated with epithelium, and there's a special one called a synovial joint here. This is the space in between your knees, and you have fluid here. If you've ever gotten an injury to your knee and it swells up, the synovial fluid is ballooning up, and sometimes they sometimes they'll actually have to take a needle and stab it in there and extract that fluid. Ah, no, 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 you don't want that. All right, so 
Um, we have this picture. I, I need to come back to this one. Let's let's go with this. I meant to give it to you in this order here. So, um, anyone who can write neatly, want to write it this first? Okay. If I were to say, hey, what are some characteristics of epithelia? I would say, one, you have something called the apical surface. Mm -hmm. Now, for time, I'm going to say some of these. Some I'm not going to write on. But you have the apical surface right here. What is it? It's open to, it's, it's, uh, it touches the open space. The apical surface touches the open space. The other side is going to be your basement membrane. Now, this is actual pointing out structures, but these are also special characteristics. Basement membrane. Do you remember at the beginning of the notes where I said that thing called the lamina propria? That's another, that's usually, and that's another name for the basement membrane. Now, the basement membrane is actually connective tissue, okay? It's, well, it's in between. It's actually the part that connects the epithelia to the, to the connective tissue below. So this, this would be underneath here would be CT, connective tissue. So don't say it actually, it, it is, just say it attaches. So this attaches to the CT or the uh, connective tissue. Okay, one thing about epithelia is that they are usually attached, they form sheets, like a sh long sheet of cells. So a lot of times they're formed with sheets and what makes this possible is very little space in between the cells. Tight connections, which leads to these two things. One's called a tight junction. And one is, right, and one's called a desmosome. And that was on your other hand. Okay. A fourth function, or characteristic, I should say, avascular. Okay. So they're avascular, so there's a little side note. Um, there's going to, beneath or below <coughs> the basement membrane, that's where your capillaries, I'm just write capillaries for blood vessels, but it's not part. So there'd be capillaries down here in the connective tissue attached to, the, to this, but they're not part. Now, if you're avascular, that means you're, most of your connection and you're moving in and out is diffusion. This is why you got to understand diffusion and facilitated diffusion and uh, active and passive transfer for moving things in and out of these cells. Right? A lot of times that's a connection point. Here, there's things. This is things are going in and out of these cells or diffusing totally out. Let, or going up to here. To what is this space here? What is this space up there? The open space. Huh? Right, so we can call it the extracellular matrix. Now, if I were to take this, you take this and fold it around, and it would form a tube. We call that the lumen. We'll get to that shortly. All right, and uh, so it's got a rapid reproduction. All right, um, I'm not going to fit it on here, but I'll say it: a high mitotic rate. Mitosis, so, so growth. Never mind, this is so growth. So it's got a rapid reproduction, a high mitotic rate. This writing is why I asked for a volunteer, by the way. You could write it with um, the marker. Yes, and I could not preserve it.
right. Um, let's this let's look at this and first see if you recognize one of the three types of membranes and where can you label where can you label different parts or different types of tissue so this is there so our opening statement is up here right epithelial forms skin surface body coverings organs glands and tubular organs like ducts and vessels. Okay, so first, this is a cross section of your small intestines. That's what this picture is. Okay, so if you see the layers here, you're pulling back, you'll see first this opening, that is a huge opening called a lumen. That's where the food and the stuff is. And one of the things you should know is if there's an opening where there's no cells, that means this layer here, this should all be epithelia. Now, layer put on top of it, let's follow it. You have, this is referred to as mucosa, right? There's an epithelium, and then you got a layer of muscle surrounding it. And that's what we have here. So that's your, that's two of your four right there, okay? All right, so this right here is a gland. Glands are always epithelia, okay? Let's work our way out here. All right, now, um, right here, that's a nerve. It's stimulating that particular part. So this is, right, so that's, of your four tissues, you see that, you actually you see all of them. Um, what I haven't labeled is, uh, the connective tissue. Now, muscularis is in reference to circular and longitudinal. These are both muscle, all right? They're running in different directions. They're smooth muscle. So we can call that smooth muscle. And then you got another layer of serous membrane. So mucus and serous membrane interacting with each other, all right? This is, now remember, if it's serous membrane, you should see the term visceral. And um, I don't see parietal label here. It's pulled pull back later. That's actually a but peritoneum, and hey, simple squamous epithelium. It's a line. That's a little thin little lining. That's there, there's epithelium and shape. The whole idea of seeing a whole organ system, you see all four of them kind of being put to use, right? So, so you got your nerve, and you just, you just keep pulling back. Um, there's your C for connective tissue. It's in between these two layers. This layer that's pulled back. All right, and then uh, mesentery. Mesentery has blood vessels going in it. That's part of the absorption as well. All right, where how you and when we actually do some of the dissections, we'll see that. So, all right, so let's uh, let me just close this.